Welcome back to wagertalk.com. We're shifting gears going to the NBA Saturday action. We've got Chicago at Cleveland. Cleveland Cavaliers, we all saw it the other night. 34 point beatdown by the Golden State Warriors. This is Brian's video best bet. And, you know, I texted Brian the other night. This guy's a diehard <laughs> Cap fan. I texted him, so at what point did you shut the TV off? Because, I mean, I'm a diehard Steeler fan. Mm -hmm. But when it gets bad, I, I'm, I'm shutting it off. I'm sorry. <laughs> when it's that bad. He said he's a glutton for punishment. I know he's a glutton, but yeah, glutton for punishment, too. He stayed the whole, whole way to the end. I watched the end. I wanted to see the character of the team. Um, the, the starters were yelling at each other as the game was going on, which I liked because nobody other than LeBron ever says anything. There's so many mild mannered guys, so maybe J.R. Smith on that team who obviously <laughs> got kicked out halfway through. Eh, it's a cheap night for me. I get to go home and you know, do a, get thrown out of the game with two tacticals. It was just a terrible matchup for Cleveland. Um, I bet Cleveland, I didn't give it out to my clients in that game. I admit it, you know, I thought it was, it, it was a good, <laughs> I, was, I, I bet against Cleveland teams more than I bet on them. But it was a situation where I thought the line was a little bit cheap. Turned out it wasn't. They just have major problems against Golden State. Kevin Love, as good of a player he is, anytime he plays a team that can run like, a, like an Oklahoma City or, a, or a, you know, some of those teams out west, he is allowed. He just can't keep up with them. And that was the problem is one of your top three players cannot stay in the lineup long enough. Scott, as we were coming in, you were talking about a little bit of bickering after the game, too, and uh, you want to share that with us? Uh, yeah, I like seeing guys, like Brian was saying, I like seeing guys get after each other a little bit when things are going really bad, as they were from start mm -hmm. to finish. I like to see things get handled in the locker room. I don't like it when players necessarily go public about anybody. He wasn't just focusing on LeBron, Kevin Love, but he said we need to look ourselves in the mirror, at ourselves in the mirror, and it starts with LeBron. He's the leader. I don't have a problem with that if it's done behind closed doors. I got a problem when you run to the media and say those things. Here's the problem with Kevin Love, besides the fact that a team like Golden State can exploit him. He had that problem last year on the offensive end with the Cleveland Cavaliers. And those two, LeBron and Love, didn't see eye to eye. A lot of people thought Kevin Love wouldn't be on the team this year. He was fine until Kyrie Irving came back. Kevin Love is all of a sudden struggling again in this offense. He looks lost at times, 11 points per game, not shooting real well with Kyrie Irving on the floor now that he's been healthy. So they got to figure out that situation. As far as that Monday night game, nobody mentioned after the game that the Cleveland Cavaliers had just played six road games in 10 days and were just coming home a couple of days later. And the final three was the Texas Triangle, which includes Dallas, Houston, San Antonio, all on the road. They represented themselves pretty well against the Spurs, who I think is the best team in the NBA. Don't want to have to make a, a living off the difference between the Spurs and the Warriors. But again, they were coming off a very tough road trip. Shouldn't have lost by 34, but this is still the best team in the East. Yeah, you referred to the Texas Triangle. My buddy, uh, Executive Sports, we used to refer to that as the Texas Death Trap mm -hmm. when you played the, the three uh, biggies in Texas. Uh, especially if you had to get it in at three games and four nights, you know, That's basically what they had to do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you get, it's just a bad spot, but how about the way golden state shot 54% from the field? And I mean, and it wasn't that they weren't shooting bunnies under <laughs> underneath. I mean, they were hitting from down everything they put up. Went you know, in. They would golden state would have beat San Antonio by 20 that night. It was just one of those nights that everything they put up there went in. Uh, Cleveland was just, they're not used to being in that situation. It's the worst loss, you know, I believe in LeBron's history. Uh, but I think it's a bounce back situation here. They're already 0-3 against the top two teams in the West. They lost the opener this year to Chicago, which is the second best team in the East, at least at this point. We'll see how the injuries go. But now they get to play Chicago again here. And, you know, Chicago's coming off of Golden State, Boston, and they got to play Cleveland. The second game of a back-to-back. Cleveland will be rested in this game. Uh, and they got Minnesota and Phoenix on deck. So there's no look ahead here. So... You know, Cleveland's going to play a couple games here before we get to this Saturday game, but I expect the best out of Cleveland in this game against Chicago, and I'll, and I'll be on Cleveland. There's a lot of character on that team. LeBron's he's not only a leader, but he's a guy that people want to play with, which is one of the reasons why Kevin Love came back there. Chicago right now is a good team, but they just lost Noah, who's always been a pain in the ass for Cleveland. <laughs> And without him in the lineup, Cleveland should be able to dominate on the glass. Yeah, I'll throw one thing. We're taping on Wednesday, so that Golden State-Chicago game will be played tonight. What I would love to see is 
Cleveland or excuse me, Chicago upset Golden sure. State or take them right down to the, you know, the buzzer. And then people are going to look and say, oh, well, look at this. Golden State beat Chicago or, you know, <laughs> yeah. beat Cleveland by 34. And look what Chicago did against them. And then, you know, they'll want to take Chicago. So we'll get some line value. And I the probably be thing, piggybacking real you. quickly. The funny thing about all that is leading into it would be great because with Noah being out, yeah. their defense isn't, you know, last nine games are giving up 105 per game going into Wednesday night's game. But everybody's saying, look how much more fluid they are on the offensive end without Noah. Yeah. So if they can beat, if they can upset Golden State on Wednesday night, boy, that sets up a nice spot. All right. Brian, you got anything you want to tell listeners about this weekend? Yeah, I don't know what the lines are, obviously, this weekend other than the football. So right now, basically what I'm looking at is getting everything ready to see if I have some value in the lines for Saturday. Uh, last Saturday, we had three plays in the, in the college basketball, swept all three. three and all. In fact, we won five straight going into my NBA game of the month tonight, and we'll talk about that next week when we do videos. All right. Well, check it out that weekend all access with Brian. And uh, guys, don't forget every Tuesday at Wager Talk, it's $2 Tuesday. Pick your favorite capper, or excuse me, we pick the capper for you, and we offer his best bet for $2. It's a great way to introduce yourself to Wager Talk or try out a new capper. Check it out every Tuesday. Find out who the $2 capper is only at wagertalk.com.